All right, guys, we are on a triple suspension e-bike that also folds in half to compactly fit in your car, which is crazy. I'm gonna pull over here and show you what we're on right now if you didn't see it in my last video. All right, so here she is. This is the Ingway X24, and it is a very, very big bike. It also sits very tall, so I wouldn't really recommend this for people that are probably under 5'5", or maybe 5'6". I'm 5'9", and I still struggle to get on it a little bit. Um, you have a front headlight, nice cable management, hydraulic brakes, big 24 by 4 inches wide of tires. You got triple suspension, so you got suspension up front. You have a shock absorber right here, and then you also have uh, actually two suspensions on both sides, which is awesome. And then you have a 1200 watt peak motor in the back, and then you have your little 8 speed right here which uh, uses this little lever, which we should have moved because one of my complaints on this bike was that this hits your thumb while you're riding, so you'd have to move this over. But anyways, I contacted the company and I asked them about some stuff on the bike from my previous video because I didn't know everything about it, and they gave me some insight. So really quick, before I get on the way and we start this trip, they said this is just for aesthetic reasons. Like, this is just to make the bike look nice. Now, you can stack a cargo rack back here. You can put some weight on it. I think this bike holds up to 330 pounds, but they just did this just to cover this, just in case you're not gonna use it to like store stuff on the back right here. So I thought it was gonna be for someone to actually sit and ride with you. You put pegs right here, but they didn't make any you know spot for pegs. But uh, I guess that's just how it is. I don't know, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. If they would have put some pegs on the side of this bike, that would have been very nice. Just as an added touch if they wanted to use it like that. But another thing this bike has that if you guys didn't see my other video is you have two batteries. One right here that goes from the top all the way down, 19.2 amp hour. You also have a battery from here to here, which is 10 amp hour. And then you have all your controller and everything right here. Pretty fast bike. There's some stuff that we need to talk about right off the bat. So let's get out of here because I'm going to be late for work sitting here talking. So we're going to be jamming the whole time. I'm not someone that uses a uh, pedal assist or anything like that. I do have it in number five. We're also in normal mode. This is something I need to talk to you guys about right off the bat after contacting the company. Now they told me they only allow you to go into sports mode, which is like the fastest that you can go on this bike, which they said you can technically hit 33 miles per hour in sports mode, but it only will allow you to do it for three minutes. After the three minutes is up, it goes back into normal mode and then it takes 10 minutes for you to be able to go back in sports mode. Now, the only way to combat that if you want to uh, go around that 10 minute mark is just turn the bike off while you're riding, then turn it back on, and then you go back in sports mode. But to me, that's a pain in the ass. I don't exactly know why the bike was designed that way. I don't know if it's just cause like an overheating issue with the controller being like insulated in the tube because it's not getting like a lot of airflow. That could make sense or maybe just warranty issues because if they do overheat, they can like fry or something like that. I honestly have no idea. Just something to think about. So when I get on one of these main roads that I have a long stretch to go, I'm gonna put it in sports mode and uh, we'll see how long it takes before it uh, jumps us back down into normal mode. But I will say overall, the biggest pros of this bike are how comfortable it is. Now I have my suspension set to the softest setting in the front. It's all the way dialed back. I can't go any farther. The preload, I believe, yeah, the preload's all the way back as well. And it's just fantastic. Even taking it off-road, I, I gave it a very high rating. I think like a nine and a half out of 10 or a nine out of 10. I mean, it's awesome. It also has a little sensor right here too on the display that will tell it if it's in night mode or daytime mode. So it automatically, if you have the setting turned on in the controller in the advanced settings, you can have that headlight pop on at night so you don't even have to mess with the headlight button at all, which is pretty cool, I would say. All right, so now we're on the road that I wanna use sports mode on because I got a long way to go. So hopefully this will uh, help us get there faster. So I don't know, I think the top speed I've been seeing is about 28 miles an hour, if that's what you guys been seeing. So I'm gonna hit the I button. Well, actually, you gotta hold the I button. I'll show you real quick. So right there, boom. All right, so it changes in the yellow. It says sport. You guys can see that. I know it's kind of hard. All right, so now we can see if we can hit that 30 mile per hour, 33. I definitely could see someone that's uh, lighter than me being able to easily hit 33 miles per hour on this bike. I'm 165 to 170 pounds, so you guys might have better luck. But also, if you guys are heavier, 
you guys are probably going to be going a little bit slower so if you're in like the 300 pound range but you don't want to go over 330 and I honestly i wouldn't recommend anyone that's over 300 pounds ride a bike like this i feel like 300 would probably be the limit that i would suggest it's just gonna feel a little bit too slow for you but oh my god it almost hit 32 miles an hour i was waiting for it oh there we go 32 miles an hour 33 no way this is faster than my video review that i did oh there we go 33 and i know that speed is accurate because in my video review i did measure that to see if it was reading correctly so i know we're going that fast hell yeah that's what i'm talking about we're pushing about 1400 watts even though this bike says it's about 1200 watts definitely getting a little bit of extra power out of it we're still in sports mode it hasn't kicked us out yet Whee! it turns very good too surprisingly for how high you sit up off the ground and how big these tires are i'm actually impressed definitely hugs you i don't know how far i can go i'm still new to the bike i probably only have like 10 miles on it but i could definitely feel like you can kind of push the limits of leaning this bike to the side and taking a fast turn and let's see how it does up this hill i'm gonna have to get in the street because someone has parked in my bike lane all right so we gotta go around i might die but we made it thanks lady all right so 24 miles per hour is the max that i saw on the speed coming up the hill now let's see what we'll do going down here we're still in sports mode surprisingly it's probably going to switch any second i'm very worried about it but hopefully it stays in sports mode to do this test coming downhill here we go here we go 33 34 35 there we go all right ingue that's what i'm talking about i like to see more speed out of these bikes yeah so 35.4 miles per hour let's just call it 35 even that's awesome that's awesome so you guys are probably thinking that oh he's not pedaling the bike i'm gonna get a lot of bad range and everything like that and i probably will i never pedal my bikes but i want to let you guys know that pedaling this bike is not going to change our top speed at all because i know a lot of you guys are probably thinking that as well and it doesn't do anything you can use throttle only to get up to your max 33 miles per hour and really quick you guys can see that we're back down into the blue and it says normal mode on there it's still giving us the max power i still saw 1400 watts on here but what i'm noticing is that it just doesn't give you that top speed it doesn't want to keep raising the rpm of that motor up so if you notice we're limited to now 28 miles an hour but i'm cool with that 28 miles an hour is great i feel like bikes that go 20 or less are just kind of not worth it unless they're really under like a thousand dollars i'm okay with 28 miles an hour that's fast enough for most people out there and that's technically being legal anyways you know what i mean well i guess kind of because you're only supposed to go up to 20 miles an hour with throttle only you're supposed to pedal to get that extra eight miles an hour that's how it works in california but hey cops aren't really gonna trip if you're doing 28 miles an hour not pedaling they don't really care as long as you're just not blazing down the street doing 40 50 miles an hour you should be perfectly okay i still think my favorite bike from ingway is gonna be the engine pro that was one of my favorite bikes from the company so if you're not really into tall bikes like this i would look at the engine pro but if you want something newer on the market with a dual battery setup and everything like that they are going to be having an x20 in this size so that basically means x20 is 20 inch wheels so it's going to be lower to the ground and feel like a moped style e-bike but it's not going to have the bench seat so it's kind of like in between but that's what i would probably recommend because i like smaller bikes but hey if you guys like sitting higher off the ground so traffic can see you i don't blame you i'm just not a big fan of being very high up off the ground i feel more connected on the road when i'm sitting on the ground kind of like a lowered car you just feel connected but there's so many people out there that love trucks and suvs and they like to sit like high up in the air so they can see the road and what's going on i get it i definitely get it i was afraid if i wasn't gonna fit in there but the bike is tall enough that the handlebars went over the car so we were good so what i'm really looking forward to is night riding footage because i really want to see how all these lights look and i'm gonna go try to scare my co-worker hello yeah. <laughs> you missed i don't know this bike does make some noise the tires are kind of loud huh can i ride it later yeah are you lying no you can no, I'm actually worried you're not going to be able to sit on it. Why? Is the chair uncomfortable? No, look how tall it is. Mm. <laughs> you can sit on the back, though. Why is it back? <laughs> oh, Carlos. 
What's up? That's the new one? Yeah. What's up, man? That's cool. Yeah. Triple suspension. You got suspension in the front, in the middle, and the rear. Whoa. Two batteries as well, which I should turn this one off right now. Is this the passenger seat? So that's what I thought too. I've been talking to everybody about that. So there's no yes. pegs. Yeah. So I talked to him about that. He said it's just for looks because it's made to put like a storage basket back here. Cargo. Yeah, but if you don't want to, you can set this on here and make it look like a cleaner setup so you don't see like the stuff underneath. <laughs> see ya. Yeah, I'll let you know if I want this one. Okay. I'll let you know. Yeah, just, just let me know as soon as possible because it'll probably be gone in like a week. Yeah. All right, guys, I just got off of work and we're going to ride this Ingway X24 at night. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to see if these lights come on as soon as I turn this on. I do have some lights around me, but oh, there we go. That's cool. The light automatically comes on. That is so badass. Does need to be adjusted a little bit. It's not looking too hot right now, but we'll take it on the trail real quick and we'll see how that light looks. But that's a cool feature, the fact that you don't have to turn that on automatically, but you can turn it on and off if you want. All right, so you guys probably saw if I left the clips in there, when I got to work, tons of my employers that I didn't, I probably didn't put all the clips in there. Everyone was asking me about the bike. Everyone was interested in buying it. And they were like, oh, what's this one about? What does it have? Like, it looks so cool. It looks big and beefy and it looks like it do a lot of terrain. And I'm telling you guys, like all people that are interested in these bikes really want a big bike at the end of the day. Something that has a lot of range and something that's comfortable. And I feel like they kind of knocked it out of the park with it, with what people are looking for. Hey, brother. What's going on, man? All right. Trying to get on this bike trail real quick. Now, uh, let's go a little ways down you know just to kind of get away from that guy back there just really quick you know i don't want someone just running up on me <laughs> it's honestly really sketchy out here sometimes there's people sleeping over here but overall right now on this trail it doesn't look that bad now it doesn't look the best but it's okay if i had to give it a rating i'm probably gonna say it's maybe like a 5.5 out of 10 to 6 out of 10 it's not gonna blow your socks off so let me, uh, let me stop right here in the middle of the trail and give you guys a good look at it. And we can also check out these brake lights as well before this guy catches up to us. So um, if you guys can see, this bike is pretty long, so it's very hard for me to get behind the bike. But you could see that the brake light is kind of dim. It gets brighter when you hit it. It's definitely not a very good brake light, in my opinion. You also have this light as well. So if you turn on the secondary battery, now you get this one. And this one's definitely a lot brighter but to be able to see this light, you need to either put the seat up or you're gonna have to remove this or something. And it only comes on when you hit the brake, so you're not gonna have this light on 24 seven. But it's kind of cool they put an extra light on there. But if you really want it to be seen, like I said, you need to lift this up, but I'm already too short. Now uh, check out this headlight real quick. Let's turn the bike off and we'll turn it back on. You guys can see this real time. The light should come back on automatically. There we go, that's perfect and uh that's how it looks really low that's how it looks very high i want to say i'm going to keep it around right there because that looks pretty good not too bad it's not super wide but it's definitely wider than most headlights it's definitely way better than the extreme bull k6 that headlight sucks <laughs> but anyways let's put it back in five and let's get going i'm also going to uh hold the i button so we can get into sports mode if you guys can see that there we go it changed orange and let's get on our way and let's get some top speed out of this bad boy and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the advice from the company it's funny that they told me this information but just turn the bike on and off as you're riding it and then you can go back in the sports mode again instead of waiting that 10 minutes to allow you to go back but i don't want to tell everyone to do that if they do get this bike because there's probably a reason why they did that it's a little inconvenient but you know, it is what it is. I don't want you guys to ruin your bike and say it was my fault. So take it with a grain of salt. That's a, you know, a workaround, just a little hack right there. But, uh, you know, like I said, do what you feel comfortable doing with your bike. Yeah, this headlight's working pretty good. Not too bad. I can definitely see in those bushes over there and I just got hit in the head with a branch. That was lovely. We're, we're jamming. Let's jump off the curb real quick. Oh my God, what a dream. 
This thing is so smooth jumping off the curb. It's absolutely like unbelievable for a bike like this with two batteries. I love it. No complaints. And they finally got lights in this area. You know this? You guys have been seeing me going back and forth to work for like how long now? If you guys have watched these videos, it's so bright over here now. I can definitely see. So they're almost done with working on this whole thing. They're going to have this overpass going over the 99. I can't wait, guys. I can't wait. It's going to be my new way of going to work instead of taking this long street that we're going to take right now. I'm going to enjoy it. Oh, you know what we actually could do? We could do that right now. Oh. No, I'm not going to do it this time. I was thinking about it, but it's probably not a good idea. I'm not going to be able to see. You know, I don't know. Well, let, let's, let's see. Let's see how it is up here. Maybe we'll take a different route. All right, coming up this hill, we got both batteries on. 95%. We're doing 23 miles per hour. Now, I've told people in my review video, it's not the best bike to get up hill. So if you live in a very hilly area, I'd probably look elsewhere. Just saying. Uh, do I want to go that way? I kind of do, but I kind of don't. But I'm thinking we need to test this bike a little off-roading. And the headlight as well. So why not? Let's do it. If we get a flat, that's going to suck. Okay, it is 12.30 in the morning. Here we go, though. Here we go. Ooh, like I said, I keep hearing that battery up front. Not that big a deal, but uh, something that might annoy you. All right, all right. We're good so far, good so far. Whee! <laughs> All right, it's probably a good idea. It's not too bad. Wait, where is the, where is the ramp to get up? Is it over here? Oh, okay. We gotta switch it up and come this way. There we go, there we go. Now we're directly over the freeway, baby. So if you guys come through Fresno, here you go. That's the freeway right there. It's awesome. And the freeway looking that way. So if you got to go to LA, go that way. If you got to go to Sacramento, go that way. It's so cool to like ride in spots that you're not supposed to go. That's what's so cool about exploring bikes, especially this one. This one is definitely easy to just take off road and just go have a blast with. I wouldn't do this on a lot of bikes, but it is definitely a huge bike to do that with. So that was awesome. Ah, it's very hard to see way up there as we're like kind of coming down a slope though. Uh, oh, oh, here comes a big bump. Hold on, I gotta slow down. Hold on, hold on. Woo! I'm pretty sure that would have taken it pretty good, but we definitely don't want to hit something straight on that has a big lip like this and like bend a rim or something like that. You never know. I, I don't want to test it out and try it. So, but all right, that was pretty cool. I'm actually kind of glad we took that way. It's very dark in this area, man. They need to get the lights fixed. I was just talking about the other area where they had nice lighting and there's nothing over here. And then also I want to go back to uh, work really quick. You can see that one of my coworkers, the girl, she tried to get on it and uh, she's under five foot. I think she's like four, nine, four, ten, somewhere around there. She's very, very short. She obviously hopped on it, but she couldn't put any of her feet down. Even with the bike completely like sideways, leaning it over on one foot, there was just no way. Um, I think I mentioned it many, many times, but if you're under 5'5", five, five, I would probably highly recommend you just stay away from this bike. Look at the X20. But if you guys are definitely over 5'5", five, five, it's not too bad. But you're probably going to feel a little bit more comfortable if you're in the 5'8 range roughly. Because I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", five, and up. If you're definitely like 6 foot, you're probably going to feel very comfortable on this bike. And your feet aren't going to come up very close. Because I'm pedaling right now and it feels very good. It's not coming up too high. And then you also have so much a seat adjustment that you can go up. I mean, I can put this thing up probably like 10 inches in the air. You know what I mean? So, but there is a limit on the battery though, as well on how far you can uh, lift it up before it's unsafe. They have markings on it. So you just got to make sure if you need to do any adjustments, you need to bring the key with you. It's a different key to um, take this battery off, which you probably don't need. You don't need a key to run this bike. Like some other folding bikes that have a key underneath the, the battery. Uh, underneath the frame like the, the top tube you don't need none of that so you're good on that i just don't like the fact that you have four sets of keys i think the main one you're really just going to want to keep on you is going to be the seat one just in case you got to adjust it that's all all right so i like the fact that we took the shortcut but this is very sketchy right here so hopefully people can see me with my very very dim brake light i would highly suggest people ordering a uh, flashing red light on the back or 
barely lift their seat up just ever so slightly so you can have that extra brake light when you're braking but at the same time it doesn't light up while you're riding i wish it did so because we took that shortcut and now we're on the last stretch of road for me to get home which is amazing by the way now that i can get home faster once that's going to be completely done and cemented so i don't have to worry about getting flats or anything like that um, i'm probably going to deduct one mile off of this trip so instead of doing about 13 14 miles i'm going to say it's roughly going to be probably like 12 to 13 miles and so far under load it doesn't go off a of voltage tag which i like uh we're at 89 percent it's not too bad i haven't used the pedals at all mode number five the whole entire time and now that i think about it let's see if we can go with the sports mode has it been 10 minutes oh god it went in the eco mode horrible Ooh, that's garbage i don't want eco mode nasty wait i'm trying to get it back into normal mode there we go okay we're in normal mode so it won't let me go into sports mode so let's turn the bike off and let's turn it back on like i said a little inconvenience now we're back in sports baby oh i'm in mode number zero that's why it's not moving at all come on let's go all right <laughs> So if you're going to do that little hack like I told you to do, you might want to do it as soon as you're at your top speed and then do it. And then remember, as it turns back on, you have to go back up and hit all the buttons to go back up to five. Some bikes have a memory mode where it will know the last mode you were on. It's a cool feature to have. This bike doesn't have it. So every single time you turn it on, you just have to uh, put it in number five, which is a good safety thing. Don't get me wrong. But if you're advanced on this kind of stuff and you know what's going on and you don't really like people like ride your stuff then i wish it kind of did have a memory function at least like a uh setting in there where you can change it but anyways right now we're hauling ass 31 miles per hour and wow that car just ran that stop sign holy moly that's different from a bike ryan running a stop sign like i'm the one that's gonna die if i get hit that car running the stop sign that is not good man that's dangerous you never know who could be walking or a car not seeing that and going in the middle and they just man they were going fast too it looked like they're going like 30 40 miles an hour but anyways uh i'm almost at the house i will let you know when i get back and i will see what our mileage is all right guys so that's gonna do it before i enter my block i just figured i'd end it right here and let you guys know what's going on with the bike so i only had maybe half a mile to go when i let you guys go in that last clip and it took us out of sports mode and it went back into normal mode again only three minutes at a time in sports mode told you guys how to fix that and get around it this bike absolutely hauls ass in sports mode and it feels very very good on the road to uh ride and stuff like that and i feel like it's a good performing e-bike when you're in sports mode it feels fantastic most people are just going to be okay with 28 miles an hour and that's perfectly fine if that's who you are i like top speed so i like the fact that it does give you the option i just wish i can go 31 or 32 miles an hour all the time every time but you can't the automatic uh, turn on sensor for the lights is awesome i like the fact that you can also turn it off if you want but it's funny because like i turn it off it automatically comes back on because I have it set to pop on with the little sensor it has in this display. So that is super cool. I love the bike overall. We are at 86% and I roughly did, like I said, about 12 to 13 miles. And that's with both batteries connected. We had this one on the down tube disconnected for maybe a mile before I turned it on. But that is fantastic. I will turn it off. And let's see where it shows our battery at. So actually it went up to 87. Now it's going and dropping down. But let me kind of make this go a little faster. I'll turn it off and turn it back on. And let's see what it says. Okay, so without the 19.2 amp hour battery going down here, we were at 76%. And then if I turn this on, it's definitely just going to jump up little by little. You'll see the percentage going up one by one. So 77, 78 and it's gonna go all the way up to what we were when we had them both connected before I just turn it off. But I like the bike. I actually really enjoy it. I am gonna get rid of it though after this video. The only thing I just didn't like on it was how this seat was. You would think that it would have pegs. I think that's a missed opportunity. And then the brake light is not that great. But this one is fantastic. It just gets blocked by this. So I would highly recommend not even putting this on. It looks nice, but leave that off so that then people can see this brake light. And then maybe think about just getting an, an aftermarket light that you can maybe hook on the back or something. Because if you don't put the seat on, you have a little hook right here that people can grab onto as well. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. 
Thanks for watching the videos. You guys are the true MVPs. And we're going to move on to another bike after this. I think we're going to be doing the electric XP or something like that. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But we got, so I think, five more bikes to review. So <laughs> stay tuned to the channel. I love all you guys. Ride safe out there. And if you guys are thinking about getting this or the Engine Pro, which is also a good bike by them, my code is Mr. Central Driver. It should be. If not, I'll leave the codes down in the description. Make sure to use the links as well. All right, guys. Later.